am the boogeyman. And I'm coming to get you. The Boogeyman is one of the most remarkable gimmicks in the history of professional wrestling. It's WWE's attempt at making our worst nightmares come to life. A remarkable character in the long line of supernatural characters such as Papa Shango, Kane and The Undertaker. It's the entity that eats live worms and also feeds them to his opponents. The Boogeyman is the master of psychological warfare. He terrifies his opponents by dressing scary and painting his face. The boogeyman carries a clock and smashes it on his forehead, because time is up for his opponent. Sometimes has a fake plastic heart and carries with him an evil looking stick. The boogeyman is also portrayed as the good guy. His initial rivalries against the bad guys are some sort of punishment for their dastardly deeds. If you are a bad person, the boogeyman is coming to get you. Boogeyman first crossed paths with JBL on the November 25th episode of SmackDown, appearing on the back of a white van playing his psychological warfare games. Then the following week, December 2nd, after JBL cuts a promo backstage, the SmackDown logo is bleeding. At this time, JBL is accompanied by Jillian Hall, who had made her debut back in July as the image consultant of tag team Eminem. December 30th, 2005, the last show of the year. JBL is having a match with Matt Hardy, the recently reinstated Hardy Boy. Side note, Hardy had been fired over the Edge Lita Hardy Love Triangle six months earlier. After returning and having an alicious feud with Edge, Hardy was transferred to SmackDown. This is post APA tag team with the great Ron Simmons and post 280 days as world champion on SmackDown JBL. In the middle of the match, the Red Mist Clock Smash Pyro combo is here. A wild boogeyman appears holding his fake plastic heart once more. Fat JBL manages to make Matt Hardy eat a fallaway slam and a clothesline from hell. All this while the boogeyman is fast approaching. JBL finally stops his offensive and goes to Jillian Hall. Jillian had moved on from being the fixer for Eminem and was now the image consultant for JBL. JBL does what bad guys do and that's being cowards hiding behind women shields himself with Jillian's mole. Boogeyman then throws some worms at Jillian Hall's chest in the weirdest sexual assault ever. Match is awarded to Matt Hardy as a result of JBL's count out. The following week, January 6, 2006, Matt Hardy and JBL are having yet another match. JBL knocks Hardy's spine first into the hood of JBL's white limo, almost not missing JBL's trademark bullhorns. As JBL celebrates, here comes the Red Man as south of the roof of JBL's limousine. JBL and Jillian run away to ringside, exiting through the audience. JBL is running in front and Jillian gets stuck trying to escape but can't because the boogeyman catches her legs. A tug of war ensues with Jillian acting like the rope. JBL finally lets go and poor Jillian is stuck in the guardrail. Her skirt is riding up and her underwear is visible. Boogeyman then reaches for some pocket worms and stuffs them down Jillian's skirt. Moving on, it's now January 13th and Rowdy Roddy Piper is enjoying a comeback to the WWE. We are going to witness Piper's pit with guest The Boogeyman. As Piper is walking down a hallway minding his own business, a wild mole with Jillian's face attached to it appears. JBL is also here. JBL and Jillian are trying to be on Piper's pit instead of the worm-eating entity. Piper relents and agrees, out of frustration with JBL and Jillian. The bagpipes play and out comes our favorite skirt-wearing wrestler, Piper's pit with guest JBL, or is it? Piper's promo gets interrupted by fat JBL, who bores us to death for 5 minutes. Piper falls asleep and finally gets to talk. Piper puts on his doctor goggles and asks Jillian what is that dying on the side of her face. 
Dr. Piper also describes this blemish as having lungs, feet and more hair than George the Animal Steel. Piper gets enough of the Texan and kills the Red Mist Clock Smash Pyro combo. Boogeyman gets in the ring. Jillian gets thrown into the Boogeyman as JBL flees. Boogie smells something, removes the hair from Jillian's face, gets a whiff of that sweet mole scent, then he licks it and smiles, starts salivating bites into it and munches on Jillian's mole. Boogeyman sticks everything in his mouth, then he plays with it and yum 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 once again. The thing doesn't want to be eaten, apparently. Piper in the corner starts praying when the Boogeyman looks at him. Boogeyman goes to leave, still eating Jillian's horrible growth. January 20th, show opens with Fat JBL accompanied by Jillian, who has a band-aid on her left cheek. Hooray for continuity! JBL is wrestling Bobby Lashley, who is undefeated according to commentator Michael Cole. 39 years old, JBL has a competitive match against 29-year-old Lashley, and although JBL put on a few pounds, he still is one hell of a worker. Mid-match, Boogeyman's team plays, and no one appears and it's time for a wrestling trope. The oh no is behind you routine. Boogeyman distracts JBL by grabbing his ankle, causing JBL to turn around. Lashley kicks JBL in the stomach stomach, which at this point is not very hard to find. Lashley applies his finishing move, the Dominator, and wins by pinfall. They cut to Boogeyman who reaches for some pocket worms and eats some earthly proteins. Boogeyman then goes to the ring while Jillian is ringside freaking out. Jillian pulls JBL out of the ring and Boogeyman does his usual jive with a mouthful of worms. Later in the show, Jillian and Fat JBL are backstage complaining to Teddy Long. Jillian is complaining to Teddy that the boogeyman disfigured her when he ate her birthmark out of her face. Heavily implied here is that the boogeyman did Jillian a favor by assaulting her with amateur plastic surgery. JVL is also upset for losing the match. According to JVL, boogeyman assaulting Jillian and costing JVL a match are on equal levels. A frustrated Teddy Long makes the match for the following pay-per-view, the 2006 Royal Rumble on January 29th, it's JBL versus the Boogeyman. It's January 27th and in a backstage segment Jillian is turning into the victim right in front of our eyes. Jillian also has extraordinary healing powers, as evidenced by the smaller bandage she is wearing two weeks removed from the tragic event she experienced. In this promo she asks JBL if he had noticed a small birthmark as she puts it. JBL sells it like we all do when someone we know is completely unaware of themselves. In storyline, poor Jillian was always unaware of her hideous mole, and it's quite brilliant, so good one WWE. This is such good shit! JBL lies through his teeth and denies ever noticing the hideous face inhabitant on Jillian's face. JBL proceeds to call himself a sexual T-Rex and says he will take care of Jillian despite being scared to death. Next we go to the arena, JBL is on the hunt for the boogeyman, looking everywhere for the red menace. JBL is facing the blast from the past, Scotty to Hori in the match, the guy who does the worm versus the man running from the man who eats worms. We could witness Scotty doing the worm and boogeyman eating it afterwards. I don't know how that would work, but it's kind of brilliant in a pro wrestling kind of way. Sadly, that doesn't happen. JBL dominates the match, but Scotty gets some offensive in, manages to drop JBL, and right as Scotty is going for his signature move, the f worm, Scotty eats a clothesline from hell. The red mist appears and Boogie's song plays. JBL plays detective trying to find the worm eating entity. Holy f it starts to rain worms. Dozens of millions of worms, as Taz puts it. From under the ring appears Boogeyman. JBL is mesmerized by the worms lying in the middle of the ring and doesn't notice Boogeyman behind him. JBL then backtracks into the Boogeyman who is standing on the hardest part of the ring and turns around in shock. Great acting by JBL. Boogeyman enters the ring, JBL is trapped. Worms behind him, the red menace in front of him. Boogeyman is fiercely eyeballing JBL. Boogeyman swings to the sides a couple of times, then clock smash, but no pyro. JVL takes a bump on the bajillions of worms in the middle of the ring. 
JVL is now in the worst slip and slide ever. JVL has a hard time getting up, but eventually manages to get out of the ring, his back covered with worm dirt. A Jillian small level of a disgusting sight. Boogeyman is in the middle of the ring, a psychological warfare attack complete. He remembers he hasn't eaten for a while and decides to munch on some ring worms. Now that's commitment. January 29, 2006 The Royal Rumble A mere two weeks and two days from having the mole the size of a credit card forcibly removed from her face, Gillian no longer needs anything covering the affected area. So f continuity. A wary JVL enters the ring. Boogeyman's theme song plays. Fat JVL is f***ing bricks as he awaits for the red manners. Cue the clock smash pyro combo. Boogeyman dances weirdly as he enters the ring and it's on like Donkey Kong. JBL doesn't want none, runs away. Eventually re-enters the ring and notices a single worm on the canvas. Orders Jimmy Corderas to remove it. Boogeyman, who is a sweetheart at his core and wants JBL to feel at home in the squared circle, takes care of it. JVL is reluctant to start a match. Cowardly JVL uses Gillian as a shield. This traumatized woman is being forced on by her mole assailant. Boogeyman decides to assault Gillian with a lonely worm dangling from his mouth. JVL takes advantage and Pearl Harbor's Boogeyman and the bell rings to start his match. Mood in the American Airlines arena is eerie. No one knows how to feel because they have the ultimate heel, a character who is everything that's bad in the world in JVL, and the supposed good guy who eats worms and who people are supposed to be behind in this match, just assaulted a woman who, for the last few weeks, WWE portrayed as being mentally traumatized. I know your face is a little sensitive. It's not the physical pain, it's more the mental anguish. I see the boogeyman, and I feel him. I feel him licking my face, and then him biting it. This is where they screwed the boogeyman character. When you are watching this, what you see is a defenseless woman getting attacked by a man in red face paint. The people can't cheer for the boogeyman because these are not the actions that the good guy would take. Baby face! The baby face is the wrestler who is portraying the good guy, who is the hero of the story. The wrestler that we want you to clap for, to cheer for whenever you are in the venue. The baby face should also be popular and sell a shit ton of merch. That is the baby face. These are terms from the inside explained using broken brilliance. But they can't cheer for JBL either because we know he's a piece of crap in storyline. So no one reacts in the arena and it kills the match for a while. The match spills out to the outside and the wrestlers brawl in the ringside area for a while. Boogeyman changes his diet for brief moments and eats the steel stairs and announce desk. Eventually they make their way back to the ring and Gillian distracts the referee while JBL tries to choke the Boogeyman with a piece of wrist tape. Bad guy tactics by JVL and the audience is quiet, no one responds and no one boos. Because they made JVL the white knight trying to save the Denzel Gillian in distress from evil boogeyman in the beginning of the match. JVL delivers punches to boogeyman, boogeyman catches punch number 4 midway and chokes JVL. JVL counters with a poorly delivered eye scratch, boogeyman sells it anyway. JVL now takes the offensive and starts pounding Boogeyman in the corner. Finally the people wake up. JVL needed to establish himself for a while in the match as the bad guy with some heel antics in order for the people to assimilate who they were supposed to rally against. The people cheered for the Boogeyman and the Boogeyman changes diets yet again. Eats some right hand haymakers from the loudmouth Texan. JVL gets confident and goes for a clothesline from hell, but misses and Boogeyman delivers a kick to the stomach and the amazing pump handle slam to fetch JVL. Boogeyman wins by pinfall. The crowd goes mild. And to celebrate, Boogeyman eats some worms and slithers out of the ring grabbing his evil stick. This is how the JBL vs Boogeyman rivalry ended. Next week on Smackdown, JBL moves on and doesn't even acknowledge what happened.
This video is part 2 of a 3 part series comprising the entire first year of Boogeyman's WWE wrestling career. If you'd like to watch the rest of the videos in the series, links are in the description. Thank you for watching, leave a comment of your favorite JBL vs Boogeyman moment in the comments. If you enjoyed this video feel free to push that like button and also subscribe for more future content. This has been fun, see you next time!